Hey guys, this is Cam Free 15 and I'm back at it with another video for you guys. I am back with the review for the Quintessential Quintuplets Season 2. Man, there, are, there this episode had a lot of uh, interesting moments to say the least. You know, you have, I guess, now pink-haired girl who's now called Reina, now gone, which I think is more than without a doubt probably a sister we don't know who but okay um it seemed like the nino little storyline um what the um it seemed like the nino storyline was i guess you can say not wrapped up yet it's still an ongoing storyline right now um but you did get some more peeling of Nino's skin, and then obviously she finding out. And it seems like the focus going on to next week is going to be about Yotsuba, um, and if she wants to continue being on the track team. So, um, other than that, let's get into this freaking review because this episode was pretty good. Um, so this quintessential, quintess the quintessential quintuplets, season two, episode three um, review. Anyways. Y'all know last week, the episode started off with Futuro at the hotel Nino was staying at, and Nino graciously let him in. Essentially, Nino's letting him take a shower, and essentially, um, he, she kind of wants to know why was he in the position he was looking like, and why does he look so sad and everything. Now, this is when we find out what happened um, after, or before he met the, met the pink-haired girl, which we later find out is Reina or Rina, whatever you, however you want to pronounce it. Um, anyways, um, Rina essentially goes on to say, or actually not Rina, I'm gonna call her Reina. Reina actually goes on to sit, tell Futuro that she wanted to talk to him and then she wants him to stop running. She eventually takes like his student handbook and she's like, I'm, I'm not gonna give this back to you until you talk to me and stuff like that. So again, that's when she tells her her, na um, her name. They go, they go on this boat because she, Re um, Reina's like, okay, where is a place where you can't run? So they go on, they go on, you know, this man paddle boat essentially, and just talk. So what happens is Reina essentially gives out her name, and we find out that it's been five years since they last they last saw each other, or they last met, and stuff like that. Now Reina goes and tells like, oh, I heard like you turn your life around, like you're a top, you know, you're a top of your class. You know, you're a tutor, you do it, you're all this other stuff. You study a lot and things like that. And um, what happens is Futuro essentially says like, how did you know all that information about me? Um, which again, can give away that it's probably one of the sisters doing this. Um, now, Reina says just like, oh, I, I just, I'm not gonna tell you that stuff and things like that. So yeah. Um, then that's when Futuro essentially tells Reina about the quintuplets he tutors. And he kind of goes into an in-depth like speech about all of them, about their all their quirky natures and how they act. But the one funny thing he said at the end of each of their descriptions, the fact that they're stupid, um, which was freaking hilarious and stuff like that. Um, now, when it cuts over to Reina's expression, she looks like she's very much embarrassed, which again, can probably give another hint that nine out of 10 times, it's one of the quintuplets who's pretending to be her some, by some strange, ring, some strange means. Again, we don't know which quintuplet it is, but um, listen, yeah, um, it, it, it's gotta be a quintuplet. I don't know who it is. Um, my, if you're gonna ask me my potential guess of which sister it could be, maybe Itsuki, Itsuki. Um, maybe it's her. I don't know. We don't. We don't know. We don't even know if this is like some just brand new freaking character um, to begin with. So yeah. Anyways, they go back to the shore, and um, Reina essentially says that she isn't going to see Futuro again. Like this is the last time they're gonna see each other, and stuff like that. Um, she eventually gives him the thing, um, the one little thing they got from the fair and said, um, when you learn to accept yourself, you can open it. So I don't know what that's supposed to mean. It must have some sort of message in it. I don't know. 
Um, some, some, something that means something of use for Kujaro. Um, essentially, um, he's trying to chase after her, but we find out how he ended up, you know, in the lake or in the pond. He essentially, when he's trying to climb out to get to her, um, he fell into the water because he slipped off the edge of the boat and stuff like that. Now, when he gets out of the friggin' shower, Nina, he sees Nino and Nino's just crying. She's like, I'm sorry that you tried to see this freaking girl and you must really be in love with her, don't you? And he's like, I'm not in love with this girl. I just admire her and stuff like that, which even Nino says like, but that's technically you liking her or something like that, which I'm even like, yeah, if you admire someone, that's, and if you admire someone, you could potentially like them. It's not like potentially true, but it's a start, I guess. Um, she she gets into a funny business saying like, bro, why are you coming out of the freaking shower all naked in front of my face? Even though he's got a towel around his waist. And he and Futuro's like, bro, you've seen me naked. You, we've seen each other naked before. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about and stuff like that. So yeah, um, what we do find out a little bit too is when Furo again tries to ask, like, yo, just go apologize to your sisters, please. Go apologize to Itsuki. But this is one. Um, we find out that, one, she's not going to apologize. But then when Furo knocks down this bag, he sees that it was the papers that um, Nino actually ripped up in half. And she actually taped it back up together and she actually did the paperwork and stuff like that, which again shows more character development for her and that's actually good that because she even says look i you know at, at the end of the day i regretted what i did so you know i'm sorry for that and stuff like that um now um you know she still won't apologize to itsuki because she feels the way itsuki's acting you know is a way that she's never you know or she it's like she's acting in a way that she doesn't even, um, you know, know her anymore and stuff like that. So, um, interesting point and stuff like that. Um, he eventually goes back to his place and him and Itsuki have a talk about it um, a bit. And yeah, anyways, it cuts back, you know, to Futuro going over back to Nino's place, I think the next day. And essentially we find out some more clarity about Nino is the fact that you know, compared to the, she said that all the sisters were essentially identical and they honestly had the same ideals and they were the same, they were similar in each way and stuff like that. Um, but Nino feels like she's the one sister out of the five uh, or out of the remaining four that has not yet like moved on and been able to get a, I guess you could say a start on what she would like to do in her life and stuff like that. And essentially what she's trying to do is force herself into that so she doesn't feel like she's alone. Essentially what I got out of this is she doesn't really want to be alone. Um, she wants somebody to be, you know, with her. And she, 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 wants, she wants somebody to like, I guess, lay her head on her shoulder and be someone that can comfort her during a time if she's going and she's having a, a struggle. Which again, she asked Futuro, hey, could you bring King Taru to come over or King Taro? come over so Futuro pretends to be his past alter ego self Kintaro and essentially the thing is he comes up with an idea he's like I can either play this off or I can just tell her the tell her the truth now um one we kind of have a little talk where Nino's like listen next time don't blow me off like that again and things like that so that's when Fudaro throughout this entire exchange, because she's making like, I guess, sweets for him. Um, Fudaro, as his alter ego, is trying to tell Nino, like, hey, I'm actually Fudaro, but um, she's not having him freaking say anything because she's getting interrupted. And when he actually goes to help, she actually goes off every now and then through this scene, you know, calling Fudaro, saying, like, how do I do this? I can't even look at him because she's obviously embarrassed and she's flustered because she likes his alter ego and stuff like that. Now, we get this one part um, when Nino actually calls Futuro down to the cafe in the hotel lobby, I'm guessing where that is. And then essentially, she manages to shake his hand, but in kind of a way to expose him, she kind of pulls up his sleeve and sees because she gave um, Futuro earlier when he was pretending to be his alter ego, the wristband. 
and she pull she pull and when she's meeting food around the cafe she pulls up his wrist or his sleeve and sees that the wristband is on the wrist or on his wrist and she's like i knew it and essentially it's i'm guessing see i'm guessing what she says like i'm not that dumb enough to be freaking stupid i knew it was you to begin with and things like that um and two as Futuro is trying to explain himself um apparently nino drugged his tea and he passes out and she kind of just dips on him she's like bye bye and stuff like that so i don't know if nino feels betrayed by Futuro. um Again, this might show that, again, if she knew from the very start that it was Futuro to begin with, especially, you know, she had to have known, especially earlier in the season, because earlier in the first episode, he had the wristband and she took that wristband off. So she had to have been, had known, like, he's Kintaru, isn't it? Uh, if Futuro is Kintaru, is, isn't he? So she just dips. And then, you know, we don't see ni We What we find out is, Nino checked out of the hospital after um, Futuro comes back to his senses and he's, she's not even attending school. We don't see Nino till the end of the episode where apparently Miku's confronting her for some reason. And I think it looked like Miku not only has the same type of hairstyle as Nino, but it seems like she cut her hair. Um, so that's very interesting. That's where the episode ends off. So it seems like that Nino storyline is still going on here, guys. So yeah. Um, anyways, the other little side plot in this episode, which is going to lead into next week, is Yotsuba's storyline, and essentially, we see her doing her track, and we get a funny little exchange where freaking um, Futuro is giving Yotsuba during this, her track run, like, all these freaking questions and stuff like that, and she's totally missing the, bas the, the basket on all these questions, but Futuro's like, well, at least it seems like she's getting something out of it, and she's learning. Um, or she's actually did some work and she's know what, you know, terms and things I'm talking about and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, but um, at the end of the practice, um, her track captain actually says, like, they're going to go on some weekend training session to prepare for their, I guess, track meet that's upcoming. And even the captain's like, you know, listen, we don't have time to freaking worry about you know, finals and stuff like that. We got a track to track meet to win, things like that. Now it cuts over back to Yotsuba in her house and it looks like she's trying, she's gonna text um, Futuro like apologizing for what happened at her practice, but Ichika runs into her and essentially kind of brushes her teeth and stuff like that. And that's when Yotsuba asks Ichika like, is it okay if I like, you know, quit the team and stuff like that? It isn't gonna, it's not gonna be no problem. And Ichika essentially says, listen, it's your life. Do what you want to do. If you want to quit it, quit it. There's nobody that can stop you to doing it. It's your decision and things like that. It was a nice little scene because Ichika was essentially saying, listen, I'm your older sister. I'm always going to be there for you no matter what, and no matter how old you are um, and stuff like that. Now, what we do find out is, um, one, we I, I guess we find out that what type of panties Yotsuba wears, which is cute girly ones. Um, and stuff like that. Um, and Futuro, we also find out, is he was on the line um, on the phone with Ichika. Ichika just kind of had him on, like, you know, on the line here in this entire conversation he had with, uh, or Ichika had with um, Yotsuba. And it seems like um, next week, Ichika and Ichika, Itsuki, and um, Futuro um, are going to probably go find Yotsuba and try to convince her not to are probably more than likely quit the team so they can focus on their studying and stuff like that in preparation for their final. Um, so yeah, and then like I said, the episode really ended off with Miku um, running into, I'm guessing another hotel complex with Nino finding her room. And I'm guessing they're gonna talk something out. So the Nino storyline is still going, is still kind of an ongoing thing. And then the Yotsuba thing, we it probably might be resolved next week, but it seems like the focus is gonna be a mixture of Nino and Yotsuba. But um, yeah, I thought it was a good episode. We got some more things. It seems like Nino always knew that Futuro was his alter ego self and stuff like that. And then I'm really liking what's gonna come out of this Yotsuba thing. Um, but other than that, that's really it. Um, so if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's Quintessential Quintuplets episode, as well as hit that subscribe button if you wanna get 
more um, quintessential quintuple reviews going forward. And then another thing I got to put in the con I said as a question, um, do you think Reyna is a completely new made up character or do you think she's facading as one of the sisters? And if that's the case, which sister do you think um, Reyna is? So other than that, I'm gonna get out of here. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day and hopefully you guys are staying safe. Till then guys, have a great rest of your evening. Peace.